conceptual Jay sounded better than Jay Prince. People talk Real about talk, it. I ain't throwing shots. All of the elements. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace here dropping in on you. First of all, I want to thank everyone for all the love and support that you have given uh, and sent my way and my wife's way and the organization's way. Now I want to just take a brief moment to remind you that we still need your support. We still need your help. Go to the description box of one of our videos and see how you can support the work we're doing. Keep supporting, keep loving us, and we're going to keep loving you. Hello everybody, Dr. Rick Wallace dropping in on you. I am not going to be before you long. I just want to take a brief moment to talk to you about something that's dear to my heart and introduce uh, to you on a deeper level, book number 22, The Undoing of the African American Mind, an introduction to collective bias, reality, syndrome. For those of you who don't know who I am, who may casually drop by or catch a video here and there. You may not know uh, the depths of my passion, what drives me, how long I've been on this journey. I started this journey intentfully. I've always been proud to be black. I've always loved uh, the idea of blackness uh, before I ever understood the complexity uh, associated with it uh, but it was in 1985 uh, as a 16 year old uh, 17, 16, 17 year old uh, that I came across Dr. Francis Cress Welsing um, on the Phil Donahue show defending the Cress theory of color confrontation uh, this is before the ISIS papers came out uh, and was published uh, this was her uh, on the heels of a push to sell the world um, black intellectual inferiority. And here was this black woman uh, standing up and holding her on uh, on a academic level. Um, and it was unbelievable. And, you know, so I fell in love with psychology. And as, you could, as some would say, the rest is history. Uh, I have spent my years in the combination of growing up, uh, discovering who I am, but also learning and studying uh, the history of my people and how we have been impacted uh, sociologically and psychologically um, ba based on the history of our time here in America, so specifically the African-American experience. Um, and many of you have purchased book number 19 which was born in captivity psychopathology as a legacy of slavery um to at that point this was my most comprehensive and detailed work uh, but i want to introduce to you today book number 22 the undoing of the african-american mind an introduction to collective bias um, reality syndrome um, before I get started I want to let you know that you will be able to find the link to get both of these books either individually or as a bundle um, we're doing a special promo this week because we're actually still trying to raise money for the 15 city tour where I'm going to be traveling to 15 cities that have been selected uh, and I'll let you know what those are when I come back and talk to you about this later on today uh, to go into those cities and create programs um, and teach and train the people in those communities with the programs we already have like Black uh, Men Lead, Restoring Ghettos Forgotten Daughters, Music is Life, uh, the Black Empowerment Initiative to actually help them implement it and simultaneously create a national network so that we aren't operating in an isolated manner uh, we are looking and pushing uh, to raise a substantial amount over the course of this weekend and so I'm going to be doing all kind of pro promos with uh, 
my intellectual work also with services that I offer and so much more as well as asking you guys to simply donate to support the work we do just the research to write these books is hours upon hours uh, and time over time to, to, to study and understand and present and create solutions so once again I'm going to ask that you support it but I just want to read uh, a, a brief uh, excerpt from this book it's from chapter 4 um, that is dealing with the destruction of the black family nucleus and I'm only going to read a small part of it uh, but it says, when dealing with the enigmatic issues that are currently plaguing blacks in America, it is important to identify the most pernicious issues and work outward from there. There is no denying that the lack of economic mobility is an immense problem for the black collective. And the miseducation of black youth is also a substantial issue that deserves a certain amount of attention. The struggles with consumerism and individualism also play an integral role in the progressive demise of the black collective. However, it is my assertion that the disintegration of the black family nucleus is the single most destructive element that directly impacts the quest for progression in the black community. I also assert that the current state of the black family is a direct result of cognitive distortions that can be directly linked to the system oppression and social engineering at the hands of an imposing system of power. The destruction of the black family nucleus is not the result of chaos, but it is a direct consequence of a systematic annihilation. Um, that's just that small assert. Um, and there's so much more. But those of you who know me know that one of the things I focus on is to create, provide, and examine, and research solutions to the problems that I uncover, that I see. I have st stood on some broad and powerful shoulders. Uh, I mentioned um, Dr. Francis Chris Wilson, but there's also Dr. Amos Wilson, Dr. Naeem Agbar, Dr. Joy DeGruy, uh that function primarily in those uh, corridors of psychology and sociology and obviously I've um, studied uh, Neely Fuller Jr. I've studied Dr. John Heinrich Clark. I've studied Dr. Yosef Ben Yakinen. Uh, I've studied many many more and I've stood on their shoulders. I've studied their research. I've examined it. I've reviewed it. I've broken it down. I've expanded it and I am bringing it to you guys in as many ways as I possibly can with the hopes that I inspire people to take action, with hopes that we are willing to peel back the layers and look deeply and peer deeply into uh, the core elements of our ineptitude or our impotency, our impotence. It is immensely important to understand that, yes, there are opposing forces, but uh, you've heard me mention this many times that the African proverb which says if there's no enemy on the inside the enemy on the outside can do us no harm is um, immensely powerful in revealing how we must approach this if we strengthen ourselves if we, if we focus on healing and we can't get past that I have done research in depth research on causality because there's a cause and effect always at play we tend to focus on the uh, on the symptoms and we don't look at the cause and so we have these surface treatments we have these anecdotal uh, engagements and we wonder why we don't gain any ground it's because we haven't dealt with the core issues we are still treating symptoms and we are doing a poor job of that we have to go into the core and deal with the cause and so I, I spend a lot of time focusing on that I spend a lot of time uh, directing us to ways that we can work on that one of the elements that have, has to be dealt with is the family that's why there's a strong push at the Odyssey Project with me and Marion to reinforce the need for a stronger black family because the black family 
is the institution through which uh, our values, interests, and principles are inculcated into the minds of our progeny. In other words, it is the institution of marriage that allows two people who have a same and like mindset, same values, same interests, same principles, same ideologies, maybe not even the same mechanisms or modalities, but a, 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 a value system that aligns with, with, with one another. And they come in together and then they start to build a family, which is the second institution, uh, really the third. Each individual is an institution in and of themselves. But marriage is that institution that begins to lay the foundation. Then there's the family, and it is in the family that you teach young children the values. One of the problems we have is we're trying to teach uh, adults about black group economics. We're trying to teach adults about self-love. We're trying to teach adults about the importance of uh, community. And it's hard because by the time you're seven or eight, you've already developed an idea of what life is and how you operate in it. And by that time, so many of us have taken on so many cognitive biases and distortions that our thought processes are marred. And that's what the undoing of the African-American mind is about. It's about processes that allow us to undo the poor thinking, the poor decision making, um, poor habits and practices, and point us in a direction of empowerment. And one of the ways we do that is we've got to strengthen the black family because we are, through weak families, creating weak children with weak who become weak adults. And so that's the focus. So the link to the book is in the description box. When you get there, you can all, you'll can you also find that not only can you get the book itself, you can also get the bundle at a discounted price, get both books, which in, the bundle includes shipping, get both books, and you'll be able to get a lot from these two books. It's a small portion of what I've gathered, and there's so much more out there that I've done in papers, um, in theses, uh, and so much more uh, that will slowly be brought to you in different ways. I'm actually working, being interviewed now for a documentary um, on how police shootings have a psychological impact on the black community as a collective. And so that is something that we're working on. So stay tuned for that. But there is so much more than needs to be done. So again, I'm going to ask you, uh, we're looking to raise a minimum of $10,000 this weekend. Um, that is just a portion of what it's going to take to solidify and actually start to book this tour because I don't want to put unnecessary financial pressure on communities that cannot afford it. It costs to pull me and bring me up there. Uh, I'm not asking for exorbitant fees, but I do need the cost of what it takes for me to get there, be there, and stay there to be taken care of. Um, and obviously, I have to support my family, but I'm not asking, you know, to stay in no four-star, five-star hotel. I'm not asking for no $10,000. I'm not asking for any of that. Now, what I'm saying is we need to be able to travel there, stay in a safe uh, space, be able to you know, do what needs to do and understand that while I'm doing that, I'm away from my office, I'm away from my work and have that taken care of. We need to do this. Um, so I'm going to be offering specials and promotions on my services, specials and promotions on my, my, my uh, material and my products. Uh, but I'm also going to be asking people to have it in your heart to show some love and, and uh, donate. Uh, I'm going to be coming at you heavy this weekend because we really need to hit this goal. I'm going to ask some of you people who can to give $500. Normally I say whatever you can give, give. And that's still it. There's no m amount too small. I don't want anybody uh, doing something crazy to support what we're doing and then you're not in a good place. That's not what I'm looking for. There are people out there that can afford to give 500 There are people out there that can actually afford to give 1000 uh, like I said, what we're doing with this, I mean, the research alone costs. People don't realize it, but it does. It's not It's not free, whether you think it is or not. My time alone is valuable because my time is what basically ultimately supports my family. So anything that is not put into work for support, my family costs. And my family sees it. They feel it. And so, again, 
we are asking you get the books and these aren't the only two uh, if you haven't gotten critical mass or I am which are personal development books they're out there too uh, and they're more than likely in the description box of this video but what we want to do is we want to do this so again get the book and donate um, again I, I don't play the guilt game uh, I don't play the manipulation game and I'm not going to mention any particular people uh, <laughs> Um, but I am going to ask you to really truly consider uh, making a, a, a serious commitment to helping uh, in what we're doing. Um, right now, as I'm sitting to talk to you, I've been up since 3.30. It's roughly about 4.30 in the morning now. I've been up reading and preparing and doing a bunch of things. And those of you also, uh, those of you who follow me also know that I've got to be careful in managing my time because I'm still recovering uh, from multiple heart attacks back in March. Uh, but, and that's another thing, good Lord. Uh, you know, I'm a little irritable uh, right now because I've changed my diet. I'm going uh, almost completely vegan, uh, except for maybe on Fridays where I probably do something pescatarian. Uh, but I've got to make sure that I'm being as healthy as I possibly can. Uh, and I think the vegan diet, plant-based diet, is definitely going to help me with mental clarity, uh, stress, anxiety, and so much more, uh, as well as allowing me to be, be um, externally fit. So you guys keep me lifted uh, as I do this, but it's something that I owe my family uh, and I owe myself and I owe my people because I have so much more to give, and so that's important. I'm going to get ready to get off of here once again. Uh, we really need your support. I hope um, that you get behind what we're doing. Uh, if we need to expand these cities, I'm going to give you a list of cities uh, that we are doing. I'm going to put it in the description box. If you think that your city should be one of the cities or you know a city that definitely is in need of the programs we're offering, I'm willing to add it as long as we can fund it. And on that note, I'm going to get ready to get off here. You guys have a great day. And I'll see you a little bit later on. But keep your head up. Keep focused. There's work to do. On that note, I'm out of here. Hello, everybody. Dr. Rick Wallace here. Dropping in with a little special announcement. For those who have followed me for any stretch of time, you know outside of the businesses that I run, like Myriad Business Solutions, the Visionetics Institute, Odyssey Media Group. I also do a great deal of work inside of the inner city communities uh, in Houston, Dallas, and other areas. Uh, I'm asking now as we push a fundraiser that you support what the Odyssey Project is doing in the inner cities, uh, especially with programs like Black Men Lead, which is a rite of passage uh, initiative, and Restoring Ghetto for, Ghetto's Forgotten Daughters, which is a program focused on helping young girls, but boys as well, suffering from childhood sexual abuse, uh, rape, molestation, domestic abuse, uh, absentee fatherhood, and so many other things. Uh, the information will be in the box. Thank you.